It's so great to worship the Lord together. I want you to grab your Bible now and turn to Daniel 6, all right? I want to think today about courage. Let me ask you the question, with all that's going on in our day, there sure seems to be this undercurrent of, of fear. Uh, I don't know if you're sensing it, but there's this kind of drum of constant frustration. I don't know, I, I sense some of that in my life. And maybe you're, you're a little shorter with family members than you are normally. Maybe you're not quite as patient. Uh, what is going on there? I think a lot of us are dealing with this kind of a low-grade fear, right? Parents are afraid uh, in these days of where their kids might go, not go. We're wearing the mask. We, we want to go out. We don't want to go out. Uh, the, the whole thing is, is kind of creating this anxiety, this low-grade anxiety that all of us are living with. Now, some of us as parents are, we're, we're afraid school may not be starting in August. Like, that's scary, right? After four months of this. But we have this, this ongoing tension and struggle with fear. Well, that's life. And the question that I want to ask you today as we get started is this, what are you afraid of? Okay, I want us to get underneath this because uh, if you can name it, okay, this will help you in this sermon. All right, you'll be able to apply it a bit more. We're going to talk about courage. Where does courage come from? What makes you brave? That's another good question. Where do you go? How do you find courage for life? Uh, because this is a very important question that all of us need to wrestle with. Uh, some of us maybe were even tired of trying to be brave. I talked to someone just this week, like I'm tired of trying to, to not be tired. I'm tired of trying not to be frustrated. I'm tired of trying to be courageous for my kids or for my family. Um, maybe you're just tired. That's what I sense. A lot of people just weary. But I think under that, there's this guiding fear, fear of the future, fear of the unknown. See, courage is defined as the ability to do something that frightens one. OK, so you have the courage to to press through something. She drew on her courage to overcome this thing. Courage is also defined literally as strength in the face of pain and grief. So we often say someone had a courageous battle, you know, with some illness. And so there's this sense that even in grief and loss, we have to have courage just to face the day. I've talked to several folks who are just, again, just trying to make it one day at a time. Let me just say this. It's okay. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to just go one day at a time. But if you live in constant fear, that will beat you down. And the Lord has not called us to live in fear but instead to live with courage. So again, what are you afraid of these days? Nail that down and you'll be able to apply this message. Again, turn to Daniel 6, go grab your Bible. And we're gonna be in the latter part of Daniel 6. Remember, if you were with us last week, uh, I'll catch us back up. But we looked at what, uh, what really led up to this famous story. So parents, listen, grab the kids. Kids, I hope you're watching this because we're gonna look at the story of Daniel and the lion's den. All right. Famous story. And we're going to see here today that courage comes uh, when we abide in God. All right. Courage comes when we trust in God and courage comes when we glorify God. All right. So we're going to talk about courage in the new normal. Now, before we dive there, let me place this in context. Last week, we were able to back up just a little bit. We landed on a singular verse that we're going to come to today. But last week, we said that Daniel now has become this amazing person of influence. We said that becoming a person of influence, uh, you first have to know that, that the birth of influence is prayer. We're going to look at prayer again today uh, because this is all uh, the whole reason why da Daniel ends up in the lion's den because he's praying. How about that? To be found praying and being faithful to the Lord. We said that the heart of influence is integrity. Daniel has lived a life of integrity uh, for, uh, for about 66 years at this point. So think about that. Almost seven decades he's been living in exile as a Jew in Babylon. Now uh, the Persian Empire. The key to influence, we said, is consistency. He's been consistent all through his life and he's bringing glory to God as a result. And then we said the mark of influence is empowerment. 
Uh, call it leadership. We call it discipleship. He has empowered not only his friends who, who are there, but he's also even discipling, if you will, pointing even uh, rulers and leaders in government, no less, pointing them to God, as we'll see again today. But this kind of life, lived uh, a living a life of influence, uh, means that we're going to live a life of courage. And if there's one thing that marks Daniel's life, it's probably that courage in the face of such opposition. So let's talk about courage in the new normal. The first thing I want you to see is that courage comes as we abide in him. OK, abide in God. Daniel lived a life of courage because his entire life was rooted in prayer. Look at verse 10. Here's where we left him last week. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, okay, so the king had signed a document that said anyone uh, who's caught praying to anyone other than the king himself, yes, that was a thing, uh, in this, in this uh, polyeth polyistic uh, culture, okay, many gods, but really often the empire, emperor, the Caesar, the leader was the, the one that people worshiped. Sounds crazy to us, but it happens even in our day, but we see it here. So anyone praying uh, to anyone other than the king. So they knew that Daniel was Jew, right? What is a Jew going to be found doing? A faithful Jew is going to be praying. So he went to his house. Here's what Daniel does. After he hears that this thing has been signed, he goes to his house where he had opened uh, his windows up there in his upper chamber and opened toward Jerusalem. And then it says this, he got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. And then it says, here's the operative phrase, as he had done previously, just as he had done before. 66 years praying three times a day, just as he had done before. Now think about this. Why is Daniel praying? Why is he praying? Uh, and this is a good question for all of us. Why do you pray? Now, you might think, well, Daniel's praying because, yes, he's about to get, if you know the story, he's about to get thrown in the lion's den. Uh, that's why he's praying. But no, he's just doing what he's always done. But here's what I would say. Why is he praying? In a word, dependence. We don't pray if we're not dependent upon God. Think about your own life. Is your life marked by prayer? See, I'd argue if not, it's clear that you're not dependent upon God. So what are you dependent on? Who are you dependent on? You're dependent upon yourself. Self-reliant people don't pray. See, Daniel was dependent upon God. But what did he pray? What did he pray in that moment? He's not doing this for show. He's doing it again because it was a pattern of his life. And it's where he drew his courage. But what did he pray? Did you catch that? It says there that it's a prayer of thanksgiving. Anne Lamott wrote a book entitled Help, Thanks, Wow. I love that. Three Essential Prayers is the subtitle. In it, she says our first prayer is always help. And isn't that right? That's generally my prayer. Lord, help, I'm in trouble. Desperate, see again, that's when we pray. Dependent upon God, that's when we pray. She says the first prayer is always help. The second one is always thanks. And the third is wow. We're going to see that in this story. The wow is when we step back and see the majesty of God when he is glorified uh, through our lives or in something that we see. So the key here, look, Daniel didn't pray. Watch this. Spoiler alert. He didn't pray prior to coming out of or how about this after coming out of the lion's den. He prays before going in to the lion's den. He's praying, he's grateful before this ever goes down. Why? Because God never changes. We can pray to God regardless of what our circumstances are and we can give thanks to him. Listen, gratitude reminds us of this. This is why our prayer of thanks should always be the guiding force behind our prayers. I was in a group last week with a, a group of pastors I'm praying with every week and we spent the whole time just giving thanks to God, different people sharing testimonies, giving gratitude to God. And then we prayed and I was so moved by the end of it all. I was so encouraged. I mean, I was in tears by the end of our prayer time together. And all we did was just praise God for who he is and what he's done. 
And so the gratitude of others in prayer, this is what I miss the most, praying together with you, with our church family. We're doing it as a staff. We do it as we can. But missing praying with one another and hearing prayers of gratitude, even as we've offered up today. Prayers of gratitude give us uh, strength and courage because prayers of gratitude remind us of God's faithfulness. So these men then come uh, to Daniel. They find him, verse 11. He's praying. They find him. And, and went to the king and they tell him in verse 12 and then verse 13, it says, Daniel has paid no attention to you, O king, is what these guys tell him. We found him praying three times a day. And then in verse 14, look at what it says. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till sun. The sun went down to rescue him. Now watch this. Daniel loves, I mean, the king loves Daniel. He's proven himself. He's like his right hand man. And he, he, he doesn't even know what he's done. Then he realizes, oh, my gosh, my own man, Daniel, is in trouble. So he's working with the legislatures, I'm guessing. He's, he's working with his cabinet. He's trying to find a loophole. How can I get out of this? Look at verse 15. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians. Okay, this is still a phrase today. It's, it's the law of the Medes and Persians, which means it's irrevocable. Look at this. The injunction, the ordinance uh, that the king establishes cannot be changed. It, it cannot be changed. And so it, he's stuck, right? And so the king doesn't know what to do. Listen, here's a simple principle that we see right here. So many things that cannot be changed, uh, God can change. And you need to remember that today. Listen, some of us are trying to, it's people, it's situations you're in. Where do you find yourself today? Relationships. How about this? Even laws can be changed or God can work even above and beyond the laws of our land to, to bring glory to himself. So listen, don't despair. I want to encourage you today. Don't give up hope on that person. Pray what you can't do. God can do. He does the impossible. What about that, that person that you want to come to faith? How about uh, that addiction that you're wrestling with? Some, some sin pattern that you've had in your life. Don't give up. What is impossible for you is possible for God. If you abide in him. Daniel was, was abiding in God and he's praying for God to move. Now look at verse 16. Then the king commanded and Daniel was brought and cast into the lion's den. The king declared to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. I think this was genuine, genuine cry of the king. Dar look, at the, look, at the, look at the faith of Darius. He's saying this God, this pagan king, your God, the one you serve, is how he describes him. Daniel's service to God had been seen in his work. Don't miss this. In the workplace, he was giving glory to God in his profession. See, Daniel wasn't a priest. He wasn't a minister. He wasn't a pastor. He, he, he was light in his workplace, and he did it, look at this, through his work. Darius saw him do his work with integrity and all the things that we've talked about. Look, your life is a continual ministry to God for all to see. Jesus said it, that people see our good works. Could I say it? Your good work and they glorify the father who's in heaven. As a result, this is what Daniel did. Look at verse 17. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords. That's with the other leaders, maybe the satrap, some kind of seal. They sealed it that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. You couldn't, you couldn't open the, um, the, 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 the stone that had been rolled over. He's placed in, can you, could it be where he's going to die, right? He's placed in there with the lions, considered the drama. Now, if you've ever seen, like me, children's Bibles, I remember when I was a kid, it you, you shows Daniel in there. I don't know that he was like 80 years old, but Daniel's in there with the lions and uh, they're just chilling. You know, right? Like what was going on? What happened when they sealed the, the lion's den? What went on that night? Uh, you know, a, a, a year ago, one year ago this week, 
Uh, I was in Africa with about 40 some odd people uh, out of our church and we were there on an amazing mission trip, mission trip of a lifetime. And we're going to go back someday and I'm, I'm going to go back and you can come with me. But we, we had an amazing time. So after this week, 10 days of ministry, pastor training, building, all kinds of stuff um, that was just, we'll never forget. We then had the opportunity to go on a safari. Okay, so we had a couple of a uh, couple of days. Some of us went on a on a safari together. You can see some of our team there. Uh, you can see there's Stacy, my wife. You can see Travis. My son was with us. It was just an amazing time. So we're out on this safari, and this was the last uh, night that we were together. We went on a couple of rides out on the, in these kind of vans, jeeps, you know, riding along. We'd seen elephants. We'd seen um, we'd seen leopards. We had seen uh, gosh bison. We'd seen all kind. We saw giraffes. It was amazing. We hadn't seen a lion. So we were like, we got to see a lion. And sure enough, our guy drove, went a little bit off road and we found a lion. You can see him there. He's just sitting out. You see the picture of him. You're like, oh, look at this sweet little lion. But look at this. Then, oh my gosh, he's showing us his teeth. Now he's not roaring there. He's actually yawning. So we're like, oh, he's still kind of cute. Well, see, oftentimes we think of lions like this. Like, look, they just cuddle up, you know, or maybe you've seen videos, like people just going up and hugging a lion um, until this happens, right? Uh, you don't want this to happen. You don't want a lion coming at you because here's the thing. No, a lion is not a teddy bear. A lion will kill you. Some of you may have seen uh, this story just this past week. A guy was in Colorado. I think he was in, he was in a house and there's a bear in the house. And, and, and I saw the story on this. The bear, he, he's, he's then face to face with a bear. The bear comes at him, just kind of gives him this slap, you know, like we might slap somebody in the face, just about took his face off. I mean, tore his ear, just, I mean, stitches, one, one, one slap of the claw. And a lion, a fierce lion who's hungry, and no doubt they would have not fed these lions. And then they throw Daniel in there. Imagine the drama. So what happens then, the, uh, the, the, the king, uh, he, he, he goes away, Daniel's thrown in the lion's den, and then night comes, all right? So he has tried to stop it, can't do it, but I want you to see this. Courage comes, yes, when we abide in God, but watch this. Courage comes when we trust in God. Courage comes as we trust in God, because look, Daniel's habit was to trust in God. And he's trusting him in all things and even now. See, think about what was going on in the, in the mind or the heart of Daniel. Daniel is thrown into these hungry lions that are about ready to devour him as best we can tell, tear him limb from limb, eat him alive. This is the form of capital punishment. And, and Daniel, watch this, he waited on God. Now this is, this is an incredible thing. He, he didn't take control of the situation. You might say, well, he couldn't do anything. He's just like a martyr. He's just going to have to die. But look at this. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't complain. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. He didn't, he, he didn't you know, uh, shout out to the king. He didn't uh, demean the king or anything or talk about the injustice that was coming his way. He trusted in God. Now, this is an amazing story. But I want to ask you, how do you need to trust in God in these days? See, oftentimes before we pray, before we even are abiding in him, we just want to take control of the situation, right? Daniel doesn't do that. You know, I've read so many books on, on courageous leadership. Everybody, you know, be a courageous leader. I've never read a book. I need to write this book. I've never read a book on courageous patience. What it means to just wait on the Lord, that you would be patient to know as I pray, God is at work for me on my behalf. You may be dealing with a situation right now this week, or maybe it's ongoing in your life. Continue to pray, continue to be faithful and know that God is at work, even in ways that you cannot see. So oftentimes we think, well, that's just passivity. Listen, no, it's active prayer, knowing that God will move on your behalf. This is what Daniel has done. Because you see, uh, courage comes as we abide in God. Courage comes as we trust in God. Look at verse 18. Then the king went to the palace. He went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him and sleep fled from him. Now that word diversions, he's totally distraught. 
He cannot sleep. That word diversions, it's also translated um, no instruments. Isn't that interesting? Or no entertainment, no help. He, he wasn't going to take on any pleasure. He didn't take on any kind of sleeping aids. I guess somebody can play that, you know, play my favorite song till I go to sleep. He's anxious. He's assuming, you know, what's happening even as he's in his, you know, in his bed, I suppose. He's thinking about what's happening to Daniel. He's he's just getting torn apart right now. He's a sleepless night filled with anxiety. Have you ever had a night like that? I know I have. You've had sleepless moments where you wake up and you just are anxious thinking about something. This is what's going on with the king. He can't sleep all night long. He's anxious. Uh, but, uh, but consider this. What's happening with David, uh, Daniel right now? What's going on with him? I like to think he's just, he's sleeping like a baby. In fact, I like to think that Daniel's just, He's just kind of cuddled up, maybe sleeping with those lions. You know, they're just sleeping. And he's like using one as a pillow. Got his mane right there. He's just sleeping. He's sleeping so soundly because he's trusting the Lord. And as we're going to see here, there's actually an angel present. So at some point, Daniel realizes, okay, I am not alone. And one angel is no match for all of these lions. He's sleeping. The king can't sleep. Consider the irony. Daniel is sleeping like a baby because look at this. The king's problem is here. How about this? The best sleep comes with a clear conscience. Uh, See, and rest for us as believers comes as we rest in him. Right. So gospel peace, gospel rest brings about this soulful rest even when our lives are spinning all around us. Listen, rest in him. Rest in his love for you. Let me encourage you, even this week, if you struggle, struggle to sleep, let the last thing you do is just pray to the Lord and pray prayers of gratitude. This is what Daniel did. Pray prayers of thanksgiving. He is good. He loves you. You can rest in his love. Consider his faithfulness. A good night's sleep comes when we abide in God and when we trust in God. Look at verse 19. Then at daybreak, watch this, early. You can imagine it's probably before the sun rose. The king arose. So he's like, I can't sleep. I'm waiting to see what happens and went in haste. He runs to the lion's den and he came near the near to the den uh, where, lion, where, where Daniel was and he cried out in a tone of anguish. So he's desperate. The king declared to Daniel, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God. Look how he describes him. Has your God, whom you serve continually, there it is again, been able to deliver you from the lions? So very early. Like, is it morning yet? We got to go. And he runs. And I like to imagine at this point, um, I don't know if this happened, but I like this, uh, like there's a delay. Maybe he's waiting. Maybe others have gathered around, I'm guessing. A dramatic moment. Is Daniel going to say a word or probably not? He's probably dead. And then maybe even Daniel is waiting. I'd like to think that he's waiting. Be dramatic. Verse 21. Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever, which is exactly what the king would want to hear. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king, I have done no harm. This is not the cry of a half dead man. This is a cry of victorious man. The, look at this. An angel was there with him. You know, that in Hebrews 1, 14, we don't have time to jump into this, but the Lord sends ministering angels to us. He, he is caring for us. He's watching out for us. And he brings an angel to care for Daniel right here. You get, again, one angel up against lions, no match. Look at verse 23. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So we had to, you know, he's down in there. They throw you down in. He's got to pull him out. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no harm was found on him. They examined him and like, man, they didn't even touch him because he had, look at this, here it is, because he had trusted in God. He had trusted in God. Courage comes when we abide in God. Courage comes when we trust in God. And then finally, courage comes as we glorify God. Even Darius saw it. See, when we're faithful to God in the face of persecution, I would say, especially in the face of persecution and opposition, he will always be with us. 
Now look, we may not always come out of the, of the lion's den alive or unscathed. I'll talk about that before we're done because that's gotta be in everybody's mind, right? Like, well, okay, what happens when you don't survive? That was a real possibility. It's why it demanded courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is in fact the determination to stay faithful, to abide in God, to trust in him, even when it looks like maybe your life is gonna end. But we will always bring glory to God if we remain faithful to him in the face of trial, injustice, and when we stand for truth. Look at verse 24. And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the lion's den. They, watch this, their children and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Wait, what? Now the children and the wives are thrown in. Now, a lot of people read this and go, see, look at that, a vengeful God, that old God of the Old Testament. No, no, no. This is a pagan king taking his, his, his vengeful, angry, evil heart towards uh, these who duped him, right? So he's now saying, you're going to pay the price because look at what happened. But he's also believing now. He's going, wait, something miraculous has happened. But watch this. This is the reverse of the cross, of the work of the cross in, in reverse. Here the, the innocent one is pulled out and released and those who are, who are guilty are thrown in and punished. See, this is the reverse of the work of Jesus Christ. There's a different story going on here. There's another story going on. Have you seen this? See, for those who are evil and guilty to be thrown in and punished, that's justice. We'd say that's justice, right? That's how that ought to go down. But grace says that, look at this, the innocent one is thrown in on behalf of the guilty. The guilty are pulled out and rescued and saved from punishment. Jesus takes on our sin upon the cross. He is the perfect one. He's the better Daniel. He's the one who lives a perfect life. He is complete righteousness. And he is thrown in, right? and devoured, if you will, takes on our sin, placed on the cross after living a perfect life. He's then placed in a tomb. The tomb is sealed and no one can come in or out. And then on that early morning, could it be before the sun rose, we believe that it was, that the women run to the tomb, the tomb is open and the one who should have been dead is alive. Jesus Christ is the greater Daniel. And what we see here, he was buried, came back to life. The first fruits of the resurrection, meaning the first installment that we would follow him as we believe and trust in him, receive his grace, the salvation that comes to us so that even when we die, we're raised again because of his victorious resurrection. Friends, have you received Christ today? Have you, do you know him that you know that, that you know that you've been saved by him? See, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says that God made him who, who knew no sin to be sin for us, to become sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This is the great exchange. My guilt, your, your guilt, your shame for his perfection, for his righteousness. He took on our sin. You can receive his grace even today. But look at this. In verse 25, it says, Then King Darius wrote to all the people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be uh, to the end. And then he goes on. He delivered. Look at this testimony. He delivers and rescues. He worked signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So you see the pattern here? God's people stand firm. God protects his people and those close enough to see it, see the faithfulness of God. And then they begin to proclaim the greatness of God. This is what it means to be a light, even in exile. Then in verse 28, so this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Now, I've got to close with this. Not everyone gets out of the lion's den. 
Not everyone makes it out. I mean, consider the story of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, Jesus said, was the greatest man who ever lived. How about that? Greater than Daniel. Now, you're, you know, you may be awesome, but no, your, your grandkids may be amazing. But no, Jesus said John the Baptist was the greatest, all right, that had ever been born of a woman. All right. And so he is proclaiming Jesus. He's the first one who said he's the he's the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. And now uh, John the Baptist finds himself in prison. OK, and not unlike Daniel, not unlike Jesus. He's taken by his enemies. Why is he in prison? Because he's, he's been speaking truth to power. He calls out Herod, who's taken on his brother's wife as his own. All right. Calls him out. So she wants John's head on a platter. John's in prison and he sends message to Jesus. In essence, saying, um, are you are you the one or not? Now, consider this, the courageous John the Baptist preaching Jesus, the Messiah, the Lamb of God who, take us, who would take away the sin of the world. Now he's questioning, eh, are you really the one? What happened? What happened? Things weren't going the way John thought they should go. He's about to get beheaded. See, this is what we do. We, we see that things aren't going the way we want them to go. So we begin to question God. Jesus comes back, sends message to John to say, hey, tell John everything's right on track. The, the, the lame are being healed. Blind are, are able to see. The oppressed are coming out. Justice is being served. My kingdom is advancing. And by the way, John, you're going to die. You're not going to come out. And in so doing, you're going to bring glory to God in ways you could never imagine. And see, the same is true for us, friends. Listen, here's the thing. The gospel is not you receive Jesus and everything will go well with you. The gospel is you receive Jesus and he is more than enough for you, regardless of what you go through in life. In him, we have courage as we abide in him. As we trust in him and as we bring glory to him, we live lives of courage. We can be brave, friend. You can be brave because his perfect love cast out all fear in your life. So as you walk with him this week, remember God's love for you defines you regardless of what you're going through. You can abide in him, trust in him, and you will glorify him regardless of what you're going through and regardless of what comes into your life this week. So I want us to pray together as we close. And for those of you who've never received Jesus, friend, you, you, you must abide in him, but you have to know the great exchange has taken place for you to be rescued from death and hell. So I want us to pray together, even as we close right now. I asked you at the beginning of this, this time, with your eyes closed, heads bowed, what are you afraid of? Just give it to the Lord. What is it? Name it. You can say it out loud. What are you fearful of? And trust Him with it. God is able. He can do the impossible. And for those of us that may be fearful, you may not have the security of your salvation. You may be fearful of eternal punishment. Friend, if you don't know Jesus, you should be. So today is your day to say yes to him. Thank him for living the perfect life that you could not live. Thank him. Be grateful for the fact that he went to the cross for your sin. Ask him to forgive you. Say, Lord, make me the person you've created me to be. As I live for your glory and not my own. I give you my life. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your love that cast out all fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, friend, if you prayed that prayer, just want to encourage you, go ahead and text the word Jesus uh, to that number you can see there. We'd love to reach out to you and love to serve you in some way. So let us know how we can do that. And uh, let's continue to worship the Lord even now as we just praise Him for His great love for us.